we need to really be thankful to the Lord. And uh, that's really what I want to talk about a little bit this morning. Let's turn to the book of Habakkuk. I want to address the issue of what's so good about it being so bad. <laughs> Just think about that. <laughs> what's so good about it being so bad? Um, Habakkuk, uh, this, this prophecy um, is a really interesting prophecy for a couple of reasons. Um, the prophet never really addresses those to whom he's speaking. You know, usually the prophets say, woe to you, and woe to you, and woe to you. Uh, Habakkuk never does that. It's certainly not here. He is uh, uh, really speaking to God. Uh, this chapter 1 is his prayer to God. And as we read in chapter 1, it's not just a prayer. It's a lot of complaints, <laughs> okay? Uh, he tells you how bad it is. So that's why as we go through Habakkuk, we want to think about what's so good about it being so bad. Let me read from Habakkuk 1 and verse 1 and following. The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. O Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou wilt not hear? Even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. Why dost thou show me iniquity, and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are that raise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slacked, and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous, therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. Behold ye among the heathen, and regard, and wonder marvelously. For I will work a work in your days which ye will not believe, though it be told you. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, that's another name for the Babylonians, which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. They are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Their horses also are swifter than the leopards and are more fierce than the evening wolves. And their horsemen shall spread themselves and their horsemen shall come from far. They shall fly as the eagle that hasteth to eat. They shall come all for violence, their faces shall sup as the east wind, and they shall gather the captivity as the sand. And they shall scoff at the kings, and the princes shall be a scorn unto them. They shall deride every stronghold, for they shall heap dust and take it. Then shall his mind change, and he shall pass over and offend, imputing this as power unto his God. And then notice in verse 12, Art thou not from everlasting, O Lord my God, mine Holy One? We shall not die, O Lord, thou hast ordained them for judgment. And, O mighty God, thou hast established them for correction. Thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil, and canst not look on iniquity. Wherefore lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously, and holdest thy tongue when the wicked devour the man that is more righteous than he. And so we have it in Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 13. So here we have uh, the prophet Habakkuk uh, looking out upon a world that's probably very much like ours, just uh, really uh, just in uh, tumult, uh, in turmoil. Uh, I think all of us would agree um, America is certainly going in the wrong direction. Um, I was reading the other day probably last Friday, about um, some of the people who have endorsed our left-wing candidates. You know, we do have some left-wing candidates. It's amazing um, who has endorsed Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. And um, you think, you know, here's a, here are organizations that are endorsing a president because they want that president in office to support their cause. Very revealing that we have presidents, <clears throat> or at least candidates, presidential candidates in our country who are appealing to some really radical people on the left. So I think we would all have to agree um, that we are living in a time very much like when Habakkuk uh, lived before the invasion um, by the Babylonians. Now you'll notice verse one, uh, it says, the burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. 
Many times the um, prophets felt that God's call to them, the message that God had given them was, was, was so weighty, uh, it was so heavy, it was something that, that they had to get off their chest. And even the Apostle Paul said, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. I'm sure you're a, you're a, you've been a, a preacher and a pastor. Um, I know that uh, feeling. Bob knows that feeling. I'm sure we all know that feeling when God speaks to us and uh, we have something to share that we really believe is very important. It becomes a burden. So here the prophet Habakkuk says he's got this burden. And then uh, in verse 2, he says, O oh Lord, how long shall I cry and thou wilt not hear? Uh, so Habakkuk is in effect saying, Lord, I'm, I'm crying out to you. Uh, why all this iniquity? Why don't you answer my prayers? Why don't I hear from you? Why don't we see your power? Why don't we see all this evil rising in the world? And I'm sure each and every one of us, we felt the same way. There's some pretty bad things uh, going on. Verse 3, why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? It's, it, it's almost like um, Habakkuk was saying God is coming to him with a platter and on the platter, all these nasty things, and God holds it up right in front of him, right under his nose, saying, God, why are you, why are you showing me all of this stuff? Why do I see all of this around me? Why, why is this happening in Jerusalem? And then you'll notice in verse 4, Therefore the law is slacked, and judgment doth never go forth. He's saying here that it seems like the law is paralyzed. Now, in good times, um, and we've had good times in America, uh, we have seen that the wheels of justice turn slowly, but they turn. I mean, we, we know that, that, that they, they, they turn. But when there's a lot of iniquity and when there's corruption in high places, it's like the wheels of justice have stopped turning, <laughs> okay? There, there's no justice. There's um, all hell has broken loose. And so that's exactly what... Habakkuk is saying here that uh, judgment doth never go forth, for the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore, wrong judgment proceedeth, corrupt decisions. Things are happening and have happened and probably will happen, coming from the Supreme Court and from high courts in the state. And so we say, well, what's going on? Don't these people have a, a sense of right and wrong? And so in verses uh, 2, 3, and 4, I think there's great pain in the prophet's heart. Uh, as I was reading these verses, I think of the, I believe it's the second beatitude, where Jesus said, blessed are they who mourn. Habakkuk was mourning. He was really mourning. Blessed are they who mourn. What's the rest of it? For they shall be comforted. And I think we see it here in the book of Habakkuk, that those who mourn, we need to mourn. We need to mourn over our own sin. We need to mourn over the sins of others. We need to mourn over the sins of our nation. But the Bible says if you mourn, um, if you're vexed by the wicked deeds that are going on around us and even in the uh, highest positions in our land, we will be comforted. And then God responds in verse 5. He says, Behold ye among the heathen, and regard, and wonder marvelously. For I will work a work in your days which ye will not believe, though it be told you. So God is saying, evil will not triumph, okay? Evil will not triumph. God's word guarantees it. And I know there are people who work evil, um, who think, well, there's no God. I'm doing all this kind of stuff and nothing, nothing bad happens to me. You wait, <laughs> okay? It will happen. That's why we all need to be saved. That's why we all need to be Wash in the blood of Jesus Christ because there is payday coming someday. You may be healthy right now. You may be healthy tomorrow. But we're all frail. Um, we could be hit by a truck. We could get some, some disease. A building could collapse. I understand we had an earthquake, was it in Oklahoma City? Last night. I mean, um, you know, payday will come. So here God responds and says that he is working in a way that you don't really understand. Now notice exactly how God responds. Notice why it's so good when it's so bad. Verse 6, 
For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation. God says Israel's enemies, the Chaldeans or the Babylonians, where are they coming from? God is raising them up. Now, Judah was in deep sin, and the Bible is here reminding us that God has a way of punishing his own people by raising up other nations. You ever think that maybe what's happening in, in America at the present time, we see our enemies mounting, we see war all around, we see uh, problems to the north, problems to the south, problems in the Middle East, problems in Asia, problems in China, India, Pakistan. God has a way of raising enemies to chasten those whom he loves. So God takes credit for raising ancient Israel's most hated enemies. Notice how bad the Chaldeans are. Verse 7, they are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed from or of themselves. These people are not subject to any laws, okay? They make their own laws. They are not subject to the laws of decency and propriety and righteousness and goodness. They do whatever comes into their minds. As a matter of fact, according to verse 10, they are unstoppable. Verse 10 says, And they shall scoff at the kings, and the princes shall be a scorn unto them. They shall deride every stronghold. That means they shall mock the fortified cities. You know, you, some of the ancient cities, they had these, these tall walls. It didn't matter. They'd either scale the walls or uh, use a battering ram on the gate or send fiery arrows over the top. There was nothing that could stop them. In fact, they were so uh, excited, so uh, inflated with their power. Notice um, that verse 11 says, Then shall his mind change, and he shall pass over and offend, imputing this his power unto his God. He says, the Babylonians say, look, I'm so powerful. It's because of my God. My God has made me powerful. And later on in Habakkuk, it says that they worship their own weapons of war. It's kind of like if a nation wins a war because of its bombers, then the nation says, well, the bombers must be my God. Okay, so whatever uh, brings the lost person great success, that's their God. If money brings them great success, they worship money. Uh, if education brings them great success, they worship their education. The same thing uh, was true with the Chaldeans. And then we see in verse 13 how Habakkuk begins to understand. Thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil, and canst not look on iniquity. Habakkuk knows that God is holy. Um, and, and the holiness of God means two things. It means he's ethically perfect, but it also means he's separated from bad things. And Habakkuk knows that. So here's the problem. Wherefore, lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously? If you're so holy, God, how come you allow all this to happen? How come you allow these bad people to have free reign? So let's think a little bit now as we uh, kind of um, uh, race down the home stretch. What's so good about it being so bad? Well, I think we need to realize that Habakkuk had some tremendous opportunities for doing good. And you and I have some tremendous opportunities for doing good. Can you imagine if we lived in a perfect world? We wouldn't have to witness to anybody. If everybody was saved, that'd really be dull, wouldn't it? I mean, if everybody was moral, everybody was decent, nobody ever got sick, nothing bad happened, I might as well go to sleep. Why should I write? Why should I preach? Why should I witness? Why should we go to church? Why should we worship the gods, uh, the Lord? So here we see that there is, in all of this evil, a great opportunity. And I want you to remember that. I want our listeners, our viewers, uh, over the Internet to remember that. Now, there are some people uh, in our world who see opportunities as problems. Oh, I've got all these problems, you know. They see opportunities as problems. Other people, and that's the side I want to be on, other people see problems as opportunities. I want to ask you, which side are you on? Do you see problems as opportunities, or do you see opportunities as problems? A lot of Christians today, because they're defeated, because they're not enjoying victory, 
because they don't know the filling of the Holy Spirit, because they're not obedient to the Word of God. They see all of these opportunities, but they, they say they're, ju they're just problems. Oh, woe is me. But I think if we're obedient to the Lord, if we're walking with the Lord, if we're filled with the Spirit, if we're allowing the Word of God to motivate us, to grab us, to direct us, to control our thinking, then we will see these problems as opportunities. That's, that's what we all need to do. So, you know, when you look at the news or read the newspaper and see something horrible, um, think, wow, what an opportunity. And that's really what it is. You know, a lot of people say, well, I get tired of all this bad stuff. Well, listen, if you're a Christian, someday you're going to be in heaven. When you get to heaven, you can, you can rest. Today, we have work. So, we see that in bad times, God knows how to handle the problems. The bigger the problem, the more wonderful the solution that God will bring about. Uh, just like uh, Gideon. Remember, he had thousands and thousands and thousands of troops, but, but God wanted him to whittle down uh, the size of his army to just 300. And God said, you know, if you have, two, if you have 31, 32,000 troops, you'll think your victory is due to the size of your army. But I want you to know that your victory is due to my leadership, my protection, and my guidance, says the Lord. So in bad times, God knows how to handle problems. So uh, here we see that's something good about it being so bad. Furthermore, in bad times, our faith will carry us through. Let's get somebody to read Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. Who will read Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4? Just read it out loud, good and loud. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Right, thank you, Alan. The just shall live by his faith. Uh, Habakkuk didn't understand everything. You and I don't understand everything. We, we just can't fathom some of the things that are going on. We just don't really understand but the just shall live by what? By his faith. Okay, faith is having that confidence in God. You know, I'm, I'm glad that I don't know everything about tomorrow. Now, I know some of the, the broad things, what's happening prophetically speaking, but I'm really glad that I don't know all the details about tomorrow, and you ought to be glad about that as well. We, we don't know. We might have a, an earthquake here. We might have Lake Oklahoma <laughs> in Oklahoma City. We don't know about that. But we are not to walk by sight, but we are to walk by faith. Remember what happened when um, uh, the Sea of Galilee was stormy and the, the waves were very boisterous? Uh, Jesus said to Peter, Peter, come to me. And what did Peter do? He had faith. He looked up and he starts walking. But then what happened when he looked down? He, it says he saw the waves boisterous. He, he was no longer walking uh, by faith, he was walking by sight. And when he started to walk by sight, he began to sink into the waves. He said, Lord, help me, I'm going to perish. Well, that's why the just shall live by his faith. And the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. That's why faith is so important. So in bad times, Bad times are hard times, but bad times are times of great opportunity for us to walk with the Lord. I love uh, Hebrews 11. That's the, uh, the faith chapter. Uh, Hebrews 11 uses the word better 11 times. 11 times. It speaks about those men and women of faith. They were looking for a better place. As we have bad times, you and I need to remember that there is a better place. We call it heaven. And one day the trumpet's going to sound, uh, ta-da, the dead in Christ will rise, and we who are alive will be caught up, we'll meet them together, we'll be forever with them uh, together before the Lord. Then Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 4.18, he says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, comfort ye one another with these words. So we need to be positive we need to be upbeat. We know that um, bad times are really opportunities to do good, and our God is sovereign over it all. And actually, what was happening here in Habakkuk, God was using the Chaldeans 
to chasten the people of Judah so that they might be prepared and be holy and be useful for the Lord and for his work. So many times when we have challenges, it's because God is kind of purging. He's kind of chipping away those sharp edges so that we too can rise and enjoy victory. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the message of Habakkuk. I would pray for all here. I would pray for all of our listeners. We speak to some of them on the phone and some have prayer needs and prayer requests. We pray that, that you would touch every life and work as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.